Okay, so in this session we are going to look at requests for quotations in Dynamics 365 for finance and operation. And you can find requests for quotation within the procurement module of D365. So uh, you find the module going to procurement sourcing. And uh, uh, we will start at looking at some of the setup options and some of the parameter settings that we have for RFQs in, in D365. So uh, I'll go to setup and we'll go look at procurement and sourcing parameters. So in the parameters, you can see there's one tab that's called request for quotation. That's one, that's the one we're going to look at. So we're not gonna go through all of the items, just some of the mo most important ones here. So you can see you have the request for uh, quotation uh, type, where you have to select either a purchase type, purchase agreement and purchase requisition. Um, and these are basically the types that uh, after the RFQ has been won by a vendor, um, you can then convert that RFQ into either a purchase order, a purchase agreement, or a purchase requisition. I believe the purchase requisition are only um, uh, uh, applicable if, uh, if the RFQ have originated from a, from a purchase requisition itself so so you would typically choose these uh, the purchase order purchase agreement depending on what your what your uh, uh, preference are here so we'll keep it at purchase order so that means that once the uh, uh, rfq has been won by vendor it will be converted into a purchase order you can have a solicitation type as a default we'll just keep it blank and we'll come um, I'll come back to the uh, solicitation type oh, uh, in a little in a little moment so uh, so we'll get back to that one the expiration date uh, that's just the default for when the RFQ should expire and you can see this one is set to 30 days. So that's basically so when you create an RFQ, they will just add the 30 days as the default expiration date. And of course, you can change that on the RFQ itself. This is just default uh, work. So default mode of delivery, delivery terms, terms of payment, and so forth. Uh, can create a trade agreement uh, specific RFQ uh, that are specific for the RFQ. Um, and then here you can see the locking request for quotation. So you can uh, set this one to lock RFQs uh, when they are sent. Okay, and then go further down in detail and say you can lock selected fields on the response lines also. Um, you can set up uh, email templates if you wanted to um, for amendments and cancellations. And you can see if I go to the email template here, uh, go to view details, um, and then I'll actually go to the email message itself. So it will allow you to, um, to upload an email template or actually pull in HTML. So you, you would create an email, email template in HTML somewhere else, and then you can add you can see variable fields from Dynamics uh, D365 into uh, that HTML template that you would have created, right? So reason for amendment and so on. Anything that has these percentage uh, within would then, you know, constitute a variable field or, or variable parameter from uh, from the D365 system. Okay, so. This one apparently only doesn't have a lot of HTML, just have added some variable fields there for, uh, for illustration purposes. So, uh, but you can bring in a whole HTML body and add those variable fields. So, so you have that option to create your email templates and then select those as uh, in case you, uh, for them to use in case you have to make amendments or also if you have to do cancellations. Uh, this one, the RFQ reply, you can see um, there's this option that says purchase so that can edit vendors bid. 
Um, so I think that one is relevant. I've, I've set it to yes here for demo, demo purposes. Um, but I would say if all your vendors have um, um, the vendor collaboration set up, uh, you may want to set this one to no, because that means that the vendor itself, they are um, submitting their bids and, 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 and editing their pricing and so on. Um, so if that's the case, then there's good reason for the purchase itself inside your organization should not be allowed to to change those pricing, the uh, the pricing that have been set and delivery terms and all those different uh, settings from the vendors that, that there's a good argument that they should not be allowed to tamper with that, right? Once the vendor has submitted that. Um, but you can also have the case where vendors are not set up for vendor collaboration. Um, and in that case, maybe they have submitted a, an email or document or something like that with their pricing. And then you need a purchaser within your organization to uh, to set the, uh, the pricing. And then you want this one set to yes, where the purchaser can then edit uh, that bid. Um, so that's basically um, um, uh, what that one does. Okay, so uh, so that's one of the important ones. Let's go back to the solicitation type here. We can uh, go look at it in, in setup, but we could also, uh, yes, let me just close this one down and show you where you can find it in, in the setup. And uh, okay, so we will go to um, open the setup here. Go to um, uh, request for quotation, and you can see you have solicitation type and scoring methods, and they are they are connected. So let's take solicitation type first. So you can see here you can simply create your own um, solicitation types, right? They, these are just uh, how you decide. Uh, the naming convention of, of that, that's uh, perfectly fine. But then once you have created that, for example, this one has created a solicitation to our RFQ goods, the, you put a description there, but then you associate that with a scoring method, right? So you can see this is where scoring methods, they are connected with the solicitation type. And then look at the scoring method, that's where you can put in you know, numbers for the method, uh, method. So let's just go in and look at view details. And you can see, you can say, what are the terms and scoring terms that, that are important for this bit? And you can then set your own ranges to that. So, so, so uh, for example, cost seems to be uh, more important than some of the other factors, right? So if you're scoring, well on cost in this case, you're scoring well overall as, as well, right? So uh, um, so you can add more here. Maybe I want to add uh, 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 time to deliver or something like that. Right, and then I'll set zero to 20 there, for example, right? So, um, so you can add your own terms, and once you've done that, you will add uh, that scoring method to the solic solicitation type that you have created. Um, you can then also say, "I'm I'm gonna allow alter uh, alternates on response line," and so if you do that, then you know probably more relevant for items, right? Because if you just use a procurement category, uh, you're probably less likely to add alternatives, but uh, but um, if, at least if they have items and, and so on, you, it will allow the bidder to, uh, if they don't, if they can match the exact item that, or product that you're looking at, then, you know, they can add some alternatives that you can then, uh, uh, that you can then review. Um, so here you could also add some bidding guidance items if you wanted to. Uh, you could leave it blank, but you could have some basic instructions that would then be applied to the RFQ. Um, 
I've created just, you know, an ounce bit in thrift, uh, but it can be anywhere, in, anything that's important, instructions that are important for you to set up, right? Gather documentation, just some basic instruction here and then submit bid or, or whatever. And you can set which of them should be uh, required, for example, submitting the, the bid and announcing bid interest and so on. Um, so um, so you can add those as, as, as default there. Um, Right, so that's the um, solicitation type and the scoring method that you need to have there. Um, and as you saw on the parameter side, you can also set a default there. Uh, but it was blank in our case, so we'll actually have to go and select it when we create an RFQ. Uh, okay, so um, so I think that's uh, some of the important uh, stuff with regards to um, the setup. So the next thing we'll go and see is actually how to create the RFQ and then how to uh, process the RFQ.